in laboratories we carry out two types of analysis quantitative analysis and qualitative analysis from the term quantitative analysis it suggests that in this type of analysis we find out the quantity of a particular species in a mixture so from quantitative analysis we determine the quantity or the amount of a particular species in a particular mixture and from qualitative analysis we have to find out the quality of the species basically it means the identification of the type of species present in a mixture so right now we'll perform some tests for the qualitative analysis that is we'll try to find out what particular metallic ions are present in a particular salt we'll start with the color of salts this helps in the qualitative analysis most metallic salts like a particular metal when it forms salts it has a particular color for example calcium salts they are white in color so if we take calcium sulfate it is a white salt so all calcium salts are white in color magnesium salts magnesium salts are also white in color so if we take any magnesium salt for example magnesium carbonate this is a white colored salt then comes copper salts copper keep this as an identification copper salts are always blue in color so if we take copper sulfate it is a blue colored salt nickel salts are green in color so you can see how color is helping us in the first step of analysis that is we can identify the metallic ion which is present in the salt so if we take nickel chloride it is a green colored salt then lead lead salts are also white in color for example lead nitrate this is a white colored salt so here we see the different types of salts based on the metallic ion which is present so the metallic ion gives a particular color to the salt now precipitates are the insoluble solid which are formed when we mix two solutions so we see a precipitate being formed in the qualitative analysis this precipitate and the color of the precipitates help us to identify which particular metallic ion is present in the salt let's see how this formation of precipitates will help us we'll use the reaction that when an alkali reacts with a salt solution it forms insoluble hydroxides so let's use this technique to identify some metallic ions we'll first start with our alkali sodium hydroxide this is used for the qualitative analysis in the laboratories the reaction which is used here is when a base reacts with a salt since we are taking naoh it is a base and we have to identify a particular salt so the reaction that will take place is a base reacting with the salt gives another salt and another base so let's take examples when a calcium salt in this case calcium nitrate reacts with sodium hydroxide it forms another base and another salt so it forms sodium nitrate and a white precipitate of calcium hydroxide so calcium salts on reaction with sodium hydroxide form a white precipitate when this white precipitate is dissolved in excess of alkali that is in excess of naoh this is sparingly soluble so when calcium salts are made to react with naoh they form a white precipitate and when this white precipitate is dissolved in excess of alkali that is naoh it is not completely soluble in naoh it is sparingly soluble let's take our next salt lead salt so lead nitrate reacts with naoh to form another salt and another alkali so it forms sodium nitrate and a white precipitate of lead hydroxide so in this case again we get a white precipitate so now we dissolve this white precipitate in excess of alkali what happens this white precipitate is completely soluble 
in excess of NaOH. So lead precipitate, which is a white colored precipitate, when dissolved in excess alkali, is completely soluble. Zinc precipitates, we take a zinc salt, zinc sulfate, it reacts with NaOH to form a white gelatinous precipitate of zinc hydroxide. From gelatinous, it means that the precipitate has a jelly-like look. So it forms a white gelatinous precipitate. When it is dissolved in excess of alkali, this is soluble in excess of alkali. Now we'll take copper precipitate. So copper salt, that is copper sulfate, when this reacts with NaOH, it forms sodium sulfate, that is another salt, and another hydroxide, which is copper hydroxide. Copper hydroxide is a pale blue precipitate. When this pale blue precipitate is dissolved in excess of alkali, it is insoluble in excess of alkali. Salts, they are also generally green in color. So when we take a ferrous salt, that is ferrous sulfate, it is dissolved in NaOH, it forms a dirty green precipitate, that is FeOH twice. Now this ferrous hydroxide precipitate, which is a dirty green precipitate, when this is dissolved in excess of alkali, this is insoluble in excess of alkali. So we see that the different precipitates, when dissolved in excess of alkali, they behave differently. So now let's summarize. We have NaOH solution and we have to check for the particular metallic ion which is present in the salt. When a salt reacts with sodium hydroxide, it can form different colored precipitates. When it forms a white precipitate, this white precipitate is dissolved in excess of alkali. So if the precipitate is sparingly soluble in excess of alkali, it is confirmed that the metallic ion or the metal present is calcium. If it is completely soluble in excess of alkali, the metal, the metal present is lead. Now, if it forms a white gelatinous precipitate, that is the reaction of a salt, with NaOH gives a white gelatinous precipitate. We dissolve it in excess of alkali. It is completely soluble in excess of alkali. If it is completely soluble, it is confirmed that the metal present is zinc. Now, if the precipitate formed was pale blue and this pale blue precipitate is dissolved in excess of alkali, it is insoluble in excess NaOH. So the metal present is copper. And at last, if it forms a green precipitate, and this green precipitate is insoluble in excess of alkali, the metal present is confirmed to be iron, that is ferrous. What colored precipitate is formed when copper sulfate is dissolved in NaOH? When copper sulfate is dissolved in NaOH, it forms copper hydroxide. This is a pale blue precipitate. So when copper sulfate is dissolved in NaOH, it forms copper hydroxide, which is a pale blue precipitate. Now, what is the action of NaOH on ammonium salts? Whenever the ammonium salts, they react with NaOH, they form the corresponding salts, water, and they release ammonia gas. We'll see how this ammonia gas is released. We know when a base reacts with a salt, it forms another base and another salt. In this case, it forms another salt that is NaCl and the other base is NH4OH. This is a highly unstable base. It quickly decomposes to give H2O and NH3. So whenever NaOH reacts with, this, with an ammonium salt, it always forms the corresponding salt water and it releases ammonia gas. So whenever we have an ammonium salt, when the ammonium salts react with NaOH, they form the corresponding salt, water, and they release ammonia gas. Now we'll see how ammonium hydroxide helps us in the identification of the metallic ion. So we'll repeat the experiment, that is, we take a particular salt, that is made to react with ammonium hydroxide, it forms a precipitate which is dissolved in excess of alkali.
let's see what happens uh, when calcium salts react with ammonium hydroxide no precipitate is formed it forms a clear solution no precipitate is formed when calcium salts react with ammonium hydroxide then we have lead salts when lead salts react with ammonium hydroxide they form the corresponding salts and lead hydroxide this lead hydroxide is a white precipitate when we dissolve it in excess of alkali it is insoluble in excess of alkali zinc salts zinc when dissolved in ammonium hydroxide it forms the corresponding salt and zinc hydroxide this is a white gelatinous precipitate gelatinous means it has a jelly like appearance so it forms a white gelatinous precipitate and when this white gelatinous precipitate is dissolved in excess of alkali it is completely soluble in excess of alkali copper salts when copper salts are dissolved in ammonium hydroxide they form the corresponding salt in this case we take copper sulfate so it forms ammonium sulfate and the corresponding hydroxide which is copper hydroxide copper hydroxide is a pale blue precipitate when we dissolve this pale blue precipitate in excess of alkali it is again completely soluble the pale blue precipitate of copper hydroxide is completely soluble in ammonium hydroxide now we had initially seen that when copper salts are dissolved in naoh they form a pale blue precipitate which is insoluble in excess of alkali so how does how does this pale blue precipitate of copper hydroxide completely dissolves in excess of ammonium hydroxide let's see when we take ammonium hydroxide it first forms copper hydroxide which is a pale blue precipitate now when we take excess of alkali we dissolve these are the products and to this we add excess of alkali so when we add excess of alkali to that product we get this that is cunh34so4 this complex salt which is formed is completely soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide it forms a blue solution and water so when copper hydroxide and that cut when the products that is copper hydroxide and ammonium sulfate they are dissolved in excess of ammonium hydroxide they form a blue solution this is completely soluble this complex salt which is formed is completely soluble in ammonium hydroxide and hence when we dissolve the copper hydroxide precipitate in excess of ammonium hydroxide it is completely soluble but this copper hy hydroxide is insoluble in excess of naoh now let's take iron salts when iron salts react with ammonium hydroxide they form the corresponding dirty green feoh holtweis precipitate this iron hydroxide precipitate is dirty green when we dissolve this in excess of alkali this is insoluble in excess of alkali so now let's summarize what happens when ammonium hydroxide reacts with different salts so when a salt reacts with ammonium hydroxide it forms different colored precipitates in the first three cases that is when no precipitate is formed or a white precipitate being formed or a white gelatinous precipitate that is a jelly like precipitate being formed we dissolve this in excess of ammonium hydroxide since there is no precipitate formed this confirms the presence of calcium if a white precipitate insoluble in excess of alkali if this is formed this confirms the presence of lead and if a white gelatinous precipitate which is soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide if this is formed then we know that there is presence of zinc now when a pale blue and a green precipitate are formed we dissolve this in excess of ammonium hydroxide when this pale blue precipitate is completely soluble in ammonium hydroxide that confirms the presence of copper and when the dirty green precipitate is insoluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide 
that confirms the presence of ferrous. So now we have seen the acid base reaction. We know when an acid reacts with a base, it forms salt and water. This, this reaction is known as neutralization reaction. In this, a base is magnesium oxide. It is a metallic oxide and hence it is a base. So this base reacts with HCl to form the corresponding salt that is MgCl2 and water. Similarly, another base that is zinc oxide reacts with HCl to give the neutralization reaction. It forms salt and water. But now, if we take this magnesium oxide, which is a base, and if this has to react with another base, that is NaOH, there is no reaction. Usually, one base does not react with another base. But there are some exceptional bases. For example, now, if we take zinc oxide, we make it react with another base, NaOH. This reacts with this base to form a salt, Na2ZNO2 plus water. So there are some bases that react with another base to form salt and water. This base, that is zinc oxide, we can also take zinc hydroxide. Initially, we took zinc oxide. Now we'll take the hydroxide of zinc. This is a base. The metallic hydroxides are bases. So when a base reacts with an acid, it gives the corresponding salt and water. And this base, that is zinc hydroxide, it also reacts with another base. So it reacts with NaOH to form the salt Na2ZNO2 and water. Such bases, that is such oxides and hydroxides which react with both acids and bases are known as amphoteric oxides and hydroxides. So the amphoteric oxides and hydroxides, they react with both acids and bases to form salt and water. Such bases are known as amphoteric oxides or hydroxides. We'll take another example. Lead. So we'll take the oxide and hydroxide of lead. So when lead oxide, this base, that is lead oxide, it also reacts with another base, that is NaOH. It forms the salt Na2PbO2 and water. Now we can also take the hydroxide of lead. The lead hydroxide, this also reacts with another base, that is NaOH, to form salt, Na2PbO2 and water. So in this case, the lead oxide and lead hydroxide, these bases, they react with both acid and base. So in this case, lead oxide and lead hydroxide are known as amphoteric oxides and hydroxides. So we saw that by using the two alkalis, ammonium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide, we can differentiate between the different types of metallic ions which are present in a given salt. 